but as well as the admin for manipulating PDF files. So recently we got some uh, licenses which are very cheap, PDF exchange. Uh, the cost is about a dollar per year from the agreement that we have. So we managed to secure about 68 licenses for rest of Africa. And we have been uh, getting a lot of questions and we decided that we should put up our presentation. And at the end of the presentation, we'll see if we can have some questions from the floor uh, so that we can address them. But this is the beginning uh, of making sure that all staff who are in need of uh, software for editing PDF should get PDF exchange and not Acrobat, which are very, very expensive. And also, uh, at, uh, the, the, the PDF exchange will be presented by Elizabeth Wangui, uh, IT officer from Kenya. And the OneDrive SharePoint presentation will be done by Atfilile Mturia, IT officer in Tanzania. Let me take this opportunity to invite Elizabeth now to take us through the PDF exchange manipulating software. Good day, everyone. I hope you're all doing well from wherever you are. A lot of introduction has already been done, so I'm not going to <laughs> talk. I'm not going to introduce myself again. I'll just go straight to the new PDF. I hope you can see my screen. Can everyone of you see my screen? Yes, Not we can. Yet. Yes, I can see you. Charles? Yes, I can see. Ah, great. Now, uh, if you have any question along the way, just put it in the comments tab and we're going to address it. Uh, for now, I'm also I'm still going to base my training on the questions that we've received from various users on this application that was introduced, and I'm going to go straight and begin from the comments and annotation tab. Uh, much of this is just basic, uh, applies, cuts across all the PDFs application. So I'll just begin from the comments tab, and I'm going to begin with the uh, annotation, the typewriter annotation, which adds text in, in form of a typewriter. Uh, can you see what I'm doing? So if I type anything, it gives everything as a, whatever I type is in a form of a typewriter. We have another annotation that is text to box. It's similar to the typewriter one, but now this one gives, allows us to put text as you can see. Um, another one, another annotation is the callout annotation, which is similar to the text box and typewriter as well, but now it's different because uh, it has additional arrow that allows you to specify on a specific area. So if you want to put a comment on um, probably that paragraph, you can just put uh, pull the arrow to point to the paragraph and probably type your comment there concerning the certain paragraph because it specifies on a specific paragraph or area. Another notation we look at is the sticky note. Um, this sticky note, I like using the sticky note because it allows us, it allows users to be able to reply to a text in case you're collaborating on a PDF document working together. So you can see the first comment I put was test, the second comment I'll add. So it allows us to collaborate and work together on a specific document. The next annotation I'm going to look at is the attach file annotation. This is the symbol that appears on the attach. So if I click there, it allows me to browse to any file, be it Word, be it Excel, whatever file, as long as it's a file. And if anyone sees this annotation automatically knows that there's an attachment there. Another interesting one is the sound annotation. For sound annotation, it allows you to either record a voice, to either record a voice notation or to browse if you have 
anything that has been recorded. And if anyone sees that annotation anywhere, automatically knows that there's a voice annotation there. Now, highlight annotation basically is just to highlight documents in a PDF. The underline one allows us to underline documents. Strike out is for striking out documents. Uh, so those are just basics of how it works. Uh, another interesting annotation here is the stamp annotation. Many other times when we work on drawings and you need to approve the document to proceed forward, you need to set it as confidential. So whatever you want, so I'll choose approve. I'll set it there. You can change its size. And place there for the document to be approved to show that probably as a manager has approved the document. Now we have very many card users and PDF has, has given us an opportunity to measure distance, to measure area. This is also a very interesting annotation for most of our card users. So you can measure probably the distance from one corner to another and all the dimensions normally appear down here. You can see bottom right on my screen. You'll be able to see the distance, the angle, everything about the, the line that I have put across. It also allows you to measure the area and the perimeter of something. Sorry, put a line. And you can see the area, the distance, the perimeter, everything appears at the bottom line. It gives you all the, the parameters that you need. Now, uh, I've made so many changes, comments. I've made so many comments on this document. If you have very many documents with very many comments, you can be able to summarize the comments and read them from a different tab. Um, so it can be grouped by page or by type or by author or by date because as you've seen the comment annotation has replies so you can group it by either the author or any or any or the subject or the date or you can sort by page whatever you want so for me I'll sort mine by page I'm going to I want summary for all my PDF documents and if I click on OK it opens a tab giving me the summary of all the comments and comments that have been applied to that document. We can also you can also be able to import comments from another document PDF document. If you have, you can export to another. You can create a comment list that appears here, list all the comments. From here, you can be able to reply to a comment. You can be able to delete a comment and perform other things. And you also have comment styles where you can change the color of the, you can custom from the defaults that we have and have a different probably comment or style. I'll move quickly to the protect tab. And from this tab, uh, we received questions like how to insert digital signatures. In a, in a document. Now we have a type of, we have this first one, which is digital signatures, and digital signatures normally demonstrate the authenticity of documents and increase their security. It, in, it, it uh, contains a digital ID, which normally has your name, your email address, the name of your organization, a serial number, and an, ex, and a, and an expiration date. It is also normally issued by an independent certifi certificate authority. So when you place a signature, to place a signature is when, when you sign a document is when you have different fields. Like you have the first person to approve and the second person to, to sign, to give a go ahead. Like you have different approvers in a document. That is when you sign a document, okay? Now for my case, I do not have have a place to sign. So if I click on sign document, it gives me this area for me to be able to create my own signature and where to place it. So you, 
if you have a signature issued by an independent. Hello? Hello? Okay, now if you have a signature that is issued by an independent certificate authority, you can simply come and use that file, browse to the location where you have it and apply it. But if you don't have, you can just create your own certificate. As I said, the digital ID contains a name and organization unit. So you set everything here. Set the email address, the country. You can set the, either, or the algorithm to either be 1024 or 2048 bit RSA. Um, you can either set the signature to be protected by your Windows login such that when once you log into your machine, you can be able to use your signature or you can go ahead and protect it further by applying a password for its own by clicking that option and applying this, the password for the signature. Now, place a signature is just when you're the only person who is signing the document, you just place it at a go. Same applies, it is a digital signature. It applies, you just browse if you have one or you create if you do not have, as I've shown you in the previous, while signing a document. Now, to certify, this is where you certify a document and the and the signature will apply will appear. It's just the same, it's the same digital signature that we are using to certify a document and a signature will appear. Contrary to this one, certify invisible where the signature will not appear. The physical signature will not appear here. But now majority of us do not use digital signatures that are issued by the uh, independent certificate authorities. We normally scribble a signature on paper scan it and we call it quote unquote digital signatures. Those can also be applied in PDF documents because uh, that is what majority of us use and that can be done from here. You click on manage. You can import if you've scribbled one on a paper and scanned it, browse to its location. I had one. I'll open it, I click OK, so I'll give it my name probably if it is mine and they can protect it using a password so that no one else uses it aside from me. Sorry, let me just add it so that you see how it appears. I'm not going to set a password to mine or alternatively, you can create one, you can draw one using the pen. I'm sorry, I don't know how to draw. And give it a name as well. You can protect it as well. Now, if I want to apply either of these signatures, I just click on whichever I want, go to the signing area, and I'm going to reduce its size to fit to where it's supposed to be. If I want to set this other one, the same thing, go to the area where it's supposed to be. I reduce the size for it to fit in the space provided. A uh, question you were asked again on this protect tab is, I've received a document, a PDF document, I cannot print, I cannot edit. How do I do that? That is done from the security properties tab. We normally, most we mostly use the password security on documents, and this is where we set a password to a document to protect it. And if you want to restrict editing, printing, and requires a password permission to be able to do all that, this is where it is done from. You put your password here to restrict the printing and changing. And you can also, you can also, isn't the restrictions a bit probably for printing? You can set either not allowed or you can allow the user to print in low resolution or high resolution. You can also make changes below. You can either allow the user to insert, delete, or do any of these options applied here. And that is how we protect PDF documents using password and to restrict printing and editing. Now quickly, I'll go to the Organize tab. We were also, I was, we were also asked how people insert and delete pages using the PDF exchange. 
Uh, you simply come to insert. Insert. You can insert a page. Now, when inserting a page, you can either insert a page. Your page could be having comments, form fields, bookmarks. So if you are inserting, you can decide whether to copy also the comments or to flatten them or not to copy completely. Also for form fields and bookmarks, and then you can decide where are you inserting it. Where, which page are you inserting? Are you inserting the entire file with all the pages and the destination? Should it be after select or your custom make where it's supposed to be put? Uh, you can also delete documents. You can delete empty spaces. You can extract pages like I can decide to extract the current page that I have. To, I, can, I want it to copy the all the comments. I want it to copy also all the form fields and the bookmarks, everything. Then I'll give it a name here. And when I click OK, it will ask me where to save my document. Should open, just hold, extract again. Test OK. Ah, OK. It's extracting, sorry. So I'll have a different tab with this page only, as you can see. And you'll have a different tab with that page that you've only extracted. You can also move pages. You can merge pages. You can duplicate pages, like have a duplicate of exactly what you have. You can replace pages. Now, this option is if you want to replace a page from a different document and replace it to the active document that you are working on. So it gives you an option to select to which pages to replace. The new pages you want to replace, you go and browse to where the page is located. And now the range, do you want to, you do want to replace all or you can custom and then replace page content, existing features, either comments or whatever, or you can specify if you don't want to replace with the comments, with the form fields as usual, either you can copy, you can flatten, or you do not, you do not copy. You can overlay. That is bringing a completely different page from somewhere, from another file you browse. Probably you can have that. And it goes on top of the document, just as the word is overlaying. I don't want to spoil my document. You can rotate a document from here. You can crop. You can crop the document. You can also watermark the documents. From here, you can set background. These are just the basics. I'm not going to go into them because they are just as we've always been doing in other PDF documents, you can set the headers and the footers as well. On the convert tab, this is also very straightforward as well. The scan, now this is a bit tricky when it comes to scan because it uses the camera of your laptop. You might think you're scanning the sheet that is opened, but when you click on scan, it automatically scans what the camera sees, the camera of the laptop, not the document that is opened. Now, from files, this is what we can convert PDF from. Now, if you come to file references and uh, in a movie slide, yeah. hello, huh? hello, are we together? Hello. Yeah. Yes, we, we can hear you. OK, so when you come to. We are, we are. OK, when you come to here, you'll be able to see what you can convert from PDF. You can convert a plain text and these other extensions, but com this is what you can convert from PDF. But to convert to PDF, there are a variety of extensions that you can convert to. Even a web file, all these extensions you can convert to PDF. So from files, you can someone asked that um, how do we 
add multiple pages to a PDF document? Or how do we combine multiple pages in one PDF? The solution is here from files. You can add files, different files. You go select files and and you can be able to add, you can you also have the option of selecting an entire folder that has PDF documents and they'll all be merged into one PDF file. You can also be able to merge text files from CVL and also from image files into one PDF. Now I've made very many changes on my document and you can see they are all different. They're all different images to, to group them like we use it in Word to group them to have them in one to become one image, you use the raticize option. It converts the content in this page into one document. Now, someone else asked, how can I, I've scanned a document and I'd like to be able to edit. Cause you see when you scan a document and convert to word, it converts as an image. You can't edit it. Now the, the solution is here, you OCR, uh, you OCR the document. So if it is um, an image, you come and select the pages you want to edit, whether it is all or the current page, or you can custom, and then you can say, okay, the language is set and everything, but now the catch is down here. If you want to be able to edit the document, the first option it tells us that you ensure the text. This one allows you to only ensure that the text is searchable and highlighted, but you can't edit. But this next second option allows you to also edit the document. So if you don't check the settings down here, you can OCR a document you're able to highlight, able to select, but you cannot be able to edit. So you have to come and check the settings applied down here for OCR so that you can be able to complete what you want to, to do. Um, we can share to share, can share on email. And Outlook is going to open. You click to and send. That is how we can share it. We can share PDF documents on email. This is just basic. Uh, for review, we had gone through the comments, how to flatten, to delete and to add comments from the comments and annotation form. I don't know whether at least the basics have been understood and whether there's any question on the basics. Oh, I moved very fast. <laughs> uh, yeah, hello. Hello, Liz. Yes. Yeah, I wanted to find out about the editing of the test. Is there a way you can uh, format in terms of font size and font color and all that? Is there a way to make those changes? Okay. Any other question? Hi, Liz. Yeah. Charles, I think you're I, taking... I shared my question on the chat. Oh, okay. Charles is going to work. Charles, have you captured all the questions? Yes, Elizabeth, yes. Okay, so who's taking the questions? Elizabeth, I'm taking the questions. Okay, okay. We can continue typing our questions on the text on the chat box. And they'll be addressed. Okay, okay, let me take question. Let me take the question that was asked about the font. Eh? Hello. 
Yes, please. As you're, you as you're working on as you're working on the other questions, eh? um, with PDF exchange, we can be able to replace under under the convert tab. You can be able to replace the fonts, but now you have to know which font is this. You have to be sure of the font that you want to replace. Okay, so if you come here to add, you have to add the font of the document. Okay, for instance, this is Arial. Okay, and then I, you can change the font size from here. Okay, you can also change the color. Now, what are you replacing with? What are you changing to? You probably want to change to Arial Black or whichever font, and then you click OK. Now, let me see. If the font that I selected first is not right, it gives an error. You see nothing has changed, meaning the font that I selected here does not exist in my document, so you have to be sure of the font you're, you're moving from. Are we together? Have I answered your question correctly? Yes, please. OK. Shall we be waiting for you to address on the others? Hello. OK, yes, I, can, Elizabeth. I was waiting for Charles to address the others. OK, let me <laughs> let me check. I see okay, Paul is saying it. at the high list, we have a project association document that was shared by MCC in Ghana and it was ele electronically signed. Once we combine the attestation with the other PDF documents, the signature disappears. How can we address these issues? Now, when combining documents, as I said before, there are options <laughs> that you have to check. OK, the comments, do you want it to come with the comments? Do you want it to come with the with other properties? Are they flattened? Are they copied? Paul, are we together? Yes, Elise, I'm here. Oh, but maybe the issue I have, I don't use these uh software this uh, pdf the exchange PDF. ah okay i, I think use a uh, nitro pdf nitro pro okay. and i think we we'll, we we'll look at nitro pro pro separately you need to and shift see how we to... can to be <laughs> <laughs> no problem this one is user friendly it gives you options to either combine to, to come together because you see uh, under protect we have the certify invisible where you can certify and it will not show the certificate and you have to you have the certifier that shows the certificate. So when combining the documents, you have to show whether the comments coming in should be flattened, should be seen. There are those properties that you have to look at. OK, thank you. Yeah. For the longest time, it's like I was talking to myself. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm seeing people were not able to see this. I wasn't I didn't have slides. I was just working on one document. Uh, Charles, I think we can move to the next one. I don't see any other question here. Atu? OK, you thank can... you so much, Elizabeth. Uh, Atu, can you take us through OneDrive and SharePoint? OK, Charles, thank you. Elizabeth, can you? OK, thank you. OK, good day, everyone. On my part, I'm going to cover about OneDrive, something that is very familiar to each and every one of us. On OneDrive, we're going to cover OneDrive and SharePoint because I can see a lot of people are a bit mixing OneDrive and SharePoint, the differences and similarities between the two, how to access file, managing, sharing, and, every, and each, everything of that, how to restore deleted file, and also features of OneDrive and SharePoint. 
OK, let me share my screen so that we can go together. Can everyone see my screen now? Hello? Yes, we can see. Yes, yes. Yes, we can see. Yes, we can see. OK, as I have just mentioned, we're going to discuss about OneDrive and SharePoint. Normally, even SharePoint, sometimes we call it OneDrive, but OneDrive is like a, your personal folder. It's like you are my files. It's linked with your personal account. For example, your name is elizabeth.wangui at smeg.com. That's your email address. And your OneDrive account is linked to your account. That means when you, for example, you leave SMEC, or your account is disabled, or your account is deleted, everything that is stored on your OneDrive account, it's also deleted with the, your account. So if your account is disabled, or if your account has any issue, it's direct affect your OneDrive account. But SharePoint, it's like, it's a team of people. It's a, what can I say? It's a project related software where that, a project or a team of people can create it by asking help desk, contacting help desk, creating for them the team by specifying according to their need, give them their project name. Every team members need to be identified and they and they will be able to create their share points. So let's go to the examples. For example, if I open here, normally we will find these two links. Okay, let's go to right. So you'll see this one. OneDrive, Subana Jurong. And also you'll see this one. Also it's Subana Jurong Private Limited. This is the desktop application for SharePoint. While this one is the desktop application for OneDrive. What we can do if we want to access them, Normally we go to this icon. Make sure, because we have a lot of issues sometimes, people are putting their data, putting their files, but they cannot sometimes see the changes they make on those files. Make sure always this icon here, the blue icon here, it says it's up to date. This one. Your files are synced. So we are going to view them online so that we can you see, this is my this is my OneDrive and my SharePoint. So this one is my personal. This is my personal account. This is where I put my personal data. This is where I put my personal stuff. If I want to share with someone, I can share them with someone. But the difference between OneDrive and SharePoint is OneDrive is personal. Only you, you have access to your files and you can share stuff when you are ready to share them with their other users. And their default uh, default feature of OneDrive is privacy. You have your privacy, you have your things, you want to keep them, you have your photo, you want to keep them, you can put them on OneDrive here. But here on SharePoint, for example, this one, it's called Tanesco Master Plan Project. This Tanesco Master Plan Project is not my folder. You see, it's if you see something here, it's not your personal folder. Some rights or some things are, are limited according to how, when you created the files. For example, this is the SharePoint for master plan project. When you cannot create that SharePoint by yourself, we need to send an email to help desk to this email. Sorry. Help help.desk at subanajurong.com, giving them all your criteria. That's for example, we are having this project called Tanesco and we want to have access because maybe other users, they're in Tanzania, other in Ghana, other in Malawi. We want to have a collaboration point. That collaboration point is SharePoint. As its name itself, it's SharePoint. It's the point where all the team members can have a point where they can put their data, everyone can create a folder and everyone can make a change concurrently and everyone can be able to see them. So when you are creating a SharePoint, make sure these three things that you have to be very familiar with. There are site owners, those who have full control of everything that's happening on the folder. For example, they're the one who can add or remove the user. 
site members, they have limited control. Sometimes depend on how we create the folders. Sometimes can uh, can even put the data, remove data and all those stuff, but they cannot add users on that folder. And site visitors, they are the ones that are given access to that link according to when they are needed. For example, for Atu and Susan can be the members of that group, but we can add someone, maybe Regina, it can be, she can be a visitor according to the needs. Maybe Regina need to access a certain files. I will show everyone how, what I'm talking about. So, we have some risk on both SharePoints and OneDrive. On what, the good thing about OneDrive and SharePoint, there is something called visioning. Versioning. For example, you make changes on any documents. The good thing is, for example, I make change on a certain document. Someone else can make changes, and at the same time, you can see the versions. For example, Elizabeth made change on this document five minutes ago, and I made change 10 minutes later we can be able to see the trend of those of version of each thing. And maybe there are, there are changes that I made which are incorrect. We can discard those changes and we can take the proper version. That's the good feature of OneDrive. But the issue is when you delete any file from OneDrive or SharePoint, it is only possible to restore the file after 93 days. After that, we cannot restore the file. But the good things of this is when you delete the file, you receive the email like this one. We note that you are you are recently deleted a large number of files from OneDrive. So if it was by mistake, you receive this email from your email address. That's why I say on OneDrive or SharePoint, you see I delete this from SharePoint. So if it was by mistake, I can I can restore the file. If I delete it purposely. I can just go ahead and say deleting. Let me show you, for example, I have this file. Sorry? So, I mean, Liz was saying that we don't have the latest uh, PDF exchange. Sorry? Just can you mute everyone? We have some interference. Okay, the question is on the PDF, so continue will address the question at the end of the meeting. Okay, for example, I have this Tanzania drawing the PDF and I, I delete it. I delete this folder. Then I can go to recycle bin if I don't find it and I don't know if I did I delete it or whatever. I can go to recycle bin and I can see this. Then it will give me the option. Do I want to delete it or restore it? If accidentally I click delete, it will give me an email that, if that folder is large, it will give me an email that I have deleted that folder. If I don't need to restore it, it will be fine. If I need to restore it, then I can go back and restore it. But for 93 days after that, Neither IT team or no one in ASMEC can be able to restore that file for you. Okay, let's go through on this OneDrive features. We have new, on new, it, that's where we can add a folder. For example, I want to create a folder. I, we can create a folder from here and I want to upload my things. Maybe I'm working on a certain project. I can create a folder and call it test and I can be able to upload everything on that folder. Once I am able, once I see everything is fine and I want to share with others, I can let click the folder, click share. And be able to put name, for example, Susan. It will give me this one. I can say, Susan can edit or can only view. Also, I have to specify these things here. Anyone with the link, for example, you need to be very careful because if you say anyone with the link, that means Susan can be able to share with someone else. But if I want only Susan to have access to that link, I need, I need to say people with existing access. 
or specific people because if I want only Susan to access to have link to that to that uh, link and Susan might share it maybe to Dora. Dora, she, she can receive an email, but she won't be able to download or view that document. So you have to be very careful. Sometimes people say that I have received one drive link, but I cannot access it. It's because when you are specify these settings, you have to be very careful. You have to understand each and everyone what does that mean. Sometimes you can send a link to outside client. People, you have to be sure that not to choose this one. If you want to send, if you want to use that link to someone outside SMEC, because it's a people in Subana Jurong Private Limited link. Only us and Subana Jurong members will be able to access that link. But maybe you, use, you send someone with a Gmail account or Hotmail or Yahoo. Those people cannot access the link. Hope that's understood. Another thing on that is SharePoint. SharePoint, as I previously explained, that uh, on the other end, the place to store your team or project file. So this is where we store our project file or our team files. Members and access to share. For example, I can show you. This one is the Tanesco master plan project. I can decide to go to site. This is how SharePoint looks like. For example, I create this folder and name it Tamco. But later, maybe the supervisor came and say that the this name is not correct. You can just rename it. It will take you to a place where you can rename the fold the folder and you'll be able to use whatever name you want. But I don't want to. You can just go here and change the name accordingly and click save if you want to save the new name. Also, we have this thing that maybe on this Tanesco master plan project, we have users, but we still want to add maybe someone who is not a member of this project. That's where it's come, site visitors when we want maybe to share this Tan Tanzania region folder, I can light click it and say manage access. If I say manage access, I'll be able to add whoever I want. For example, here, it will show me people, list of people who has access to it. If I want to add, I can be able to add. For example, I want to add someone outside the outside SMEC, I, I can add, or oh, I want to add someone inside SMEC, I can do so, but I'll need to specify the rights. For example, I can add Charles, who is inside SMEC, but I can say Charles can edit. I can grant access. You can notify people. Sometimes it's it need to send the notification to each and every member of this group so that every member know that Charles Rubeja received this invitation or received this access to this folder. So that's how you can add people to your SharePoint. For example, maybe you are working on a certain project, but you want to give a person only a part of that, not to have access to the whole project, but only maybe to access only Tanzania region folder. You can give that by light click and go manage access and you can do so. Also, for example, maybe I have sent some something to someone but I, I want to stop the, that person to see whatever I'm doing from now. For, I can go to just manage access. Can go to information. I can say add people, but also I can go to manage access. And go advanced. By going advanced, Maybe because this one I haven't shared with anyone else. Let me check with the something that and also this icon here have meanings. This one is written private. That's mean I haven't shared this with anyone, but this one is written shared. That's mean once or twice I've shared with someone else. So, for example, I know that this one I've shared with someone else, but now I want to stop that person from sharing with me or from knowing anything I'm doing from that sample for training. Okay, what I'll do is going to manage access and check advanced. You see, I have Angela, I have David, Elizabeth, and Regina. Maybe I say I want to stop Angela from seeing anything. 
I can say remove using. Okay, so Angela won't be able to see anything I do on this. You see now we don't see Angela on this list. So that's the good thing about OneDrive and SharePoint. For example, someone is working on a certain project and you don't need their input anymore. You can just remove that person and grant permission maybe to someone else. Or maybe say, Angela's part has already finished. Then you can give someone else access. Then you can add that person. So, and you can specify maybe I put Regina full control, Elizabeth, she can contribute or whatever. Contribute is same as members. Full control, that's mean you are, it's like a owner, but contribute is like a member. That's mean you have limited access to the folder. The other thing is you have to know these symbols because sometimes you might have a, a folder that's why I say you have to make sure that this one here, it shows folders are up to date. Because if they are, you have this, for example, this red icon here, that means these files are not synchronized. And the other thing that each and everyone needs to understand is once you synchronize, that means you are using a local space on your computer. So when you find that a lot of, maybe your hard disk is a bit full, you have to know that. If you synchronize everything, sometimes you have to release space on your computer. So if you synchronize, synchronize everything, it's use the local space on your machine. So you see on my computer, I'm synch all folders are up to date, they, your file are synchronized. But if you see this blue icon, that means this file is available online. So they are not taking my computer space, even though I say I'm synchronizing, they are available online. But if this one is like this, they are available online or, and also locally. So that's the meaning of these icons here. And if you see it's a, a bit dark green and white symbol or a white tick inside, these are files that are always available. You can see that you can have those files, you don't delete them. For example, for us, IT team, we have those software that we always need them. And uh, the good thing about OneDrive and SharePoint is you can access them from any device. For example, I forgot my computer at home. I can take another computer and be able to sign in on my OneDrive. I hope everyone knows how to sign with OneDrive. Just go to any browser and click OneDrive.com. If you click OneDrive.com, it will give you options to sign in and also to you'll be able to See all of your files and you can make decision if you want to synchronize your files or you just want to view them online. If you sign in and continue, everything will be as normal. So these symbols, you have to be very careful. And if you see that it, there is X icon here, that's mean everything is not synchronized and you need to re re restore that one. You need to resolve that issue. And about how to share files, you can share both online or locally or on the desktop. What I can do is just right click and go to share. If I want to share, once you synchronize, you can share both here or you can share on online. While it's waiting, you can go here. You can go to my files. For example, this one, I can click share and specify the list of people as I previously explained. Any questions so far? Okay. The last thing is we have to be very careful when, once we delete our files because the files are only available for 93 days. After that, neither on our side no yourself can be able to restore that file. So that's why we really recommend to have redundance for you to share both file on local project file server and also to have a person who will be uh, have task of make sure that everything is being backed up. Maybe using backup tapes, use project local file server, for example, Ofgen and project for Tanzania and also Rwanda, we are using the same. Also, you put your files on OneDrive, but make sure about when you are giving access to people. 
on my side, I think Charles, I'm done. Maybe if there is any question. Okay, thanks, Artu. Is there any question from the floor? Okay, if not, we have uh, seven minutes remaining. I'll take you through MS Teams uh, collaboration app. Let me share my screen. Yeah, MS Teams Teams uh, is a collaboration app and we have some uh, tools that can help us to collaborate uh, our documents, uh, appointments, uh, tasks, and have conversation from any device. You can have a conversation on iPad, your phone, your laptop, your computer, and the team can work on a document at the same time, real time working on a document and all the reviews, the updates will be captured. And uh, today we'll talk about uh, managing the tasks in a team. This, uh, this uh, app we have been using for quite some time in our IT department where we can track our issues, we get updates on the issues. Uh, without having a tool like this, it is easy to forget some of the issues of, or some of the updates. Let me share my screen so that you can have a view on what I'm saying. Do you see my screen? Not yet. There, do you see my screen? Yeah, I can see it now. Okay, okay, fine. Uh, in MS Teams, you have this uh, navigation uh, uh, tab where we have activity, chat, calls, files, and we have an option here for Teams. When you click here, uh, it will list all the teams which you are a member of. Uh, I'm a member of Africa IT. I'm a member of this training. We have created a training teams for playing around. So if I click on the general tab here in the IT team training, I will see some tabs at the top and I have a tasks tab. I have arranged my uh, my tasks in uh, a bus in baskets where I have uh, issues on the left which they they are not going to be due recently and I have 30 days due issues and I have the ones that are supposed to be worked this uh, this week. You can add any bucket uh, you want add new bucket here I can say this is a bucket for invoices or I can have a bucket for marketing or for finance. Any, 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 how you want to arrange your tasks. They say I want to have an invoice uh, task. You can add a task. This is like a to-do list. And I put uh, a task here, maybe following up invoices. For Rufiji project and I can set a due date maybe up to the end of the month or next month and you can assign somebody within your team to work on this follow-up of invoices say R2 will be assigned a task uh, sorry I will assign also Elizabeth I will assign David, and then I add the task. Oh, sorry, sorry. It has already been added. So this is a task I have added, following up invoice for a Fiji project, and uh, I have add to as assigned. I can add others, 
any number of people you want to assign tasks or to get informed about this task. And I can say maybe the task is in, on prog in progress or not started. Uh, start date, I can say start from today and due date 30th of June. And I can put some notes about the task. This is uh, following up uh, something on the invoices of Rufiji project. I can give the priority, maybe very important or very urgent. And I can put some small tasks like checklists. Uh, maybe say uh, creating invoice. Invoices, maybe R2. Uh, working on the approval, maybe Elizabeth. So these are the small, small tasks within the, the task. You can put an attachment, maybe the invoice you can attach here. And at any time you can put your comments. If for instance, you are supposed to do a follow up today and you didn't manage or you get a reply, you can put comments here and it will be it will notify all the people in the team. Uh, even if you are not opening open the team, it can come to your outlook. And when you complete the task, you can just close it. You can close here completed or you can just click on the circle here. Otherwise it will continue to be to be in your basket for invoices. If I go to our team, IT team in Africa division, go to general or rest of Africa regions, and I, I can show you the task that we have at the moment. To do this week, we have a task for drawing our infrastructures. We are going to complete this week. Uh, in the next one month, we have uh, Uganda bypassing GCX uh, invoice contract. We have staff awareness, which you are going, which is currently being done. If I open it, it has started in progress. It had a priority medium. Due date was 26 May. And here we had a PDF exchange awareness. Uh, Elizabeth was going to do it, and David, the OneDrive, Osula, and Atu. We removed some of the presenters because of time. Now this has been completed. It will scratch. OneDrive has already been done. Microsoft team I'm doing. And when I finish, I say task completed. And I can come here and say the task is completed. Then you can see here it has been removed. So this task will be moved now from, from uh, within 30 days to completed tasks. Our time is over. Do you have any question? Fortunately, we are recording. I know some of us, we got uh, challenges with the slides opening or moving, so we'll share the recorded version. Is there anyone with a question or additional notes? Comments? Hi, Charles. I just wanted to say thank you. I think this is very helpful because I was actually struggling with SharePoint and yeah, this clarified a lot of things. So thanks to the whole okay, IT yeah. team. Yeah. Okay, thank you. If you have any issue anytime, just uh, write to help desk, copy us and we'll address the issue. All right, uh, thank you so much and have a good day, good week. Thank you, Charles. Meet you another time. Bye. Thank Bye. you, Charles. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, very, very Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Charles. Have a good Bye. day, everyone. Thanks, team. Have a good day.